Hey guys, it's me, Marty. So, it has been a while since I have done a trans vlog type update, and I have had something on my mind for a while that I want to talk about, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that is living with or dealing with uh, gender dysphoria, which is something that has been hitting me a lot these past few, well, especially these past few days, but for these past weeks, it has just been really, really, really hard, and I figured, you know what, I'm going to talk about it because there's a lot of people who don't understand what that is, what it's like dealing with it, and then there's also the fact that, you know, I could be helping other people who are going through it be like, hey, I could sympathize what I'm going through is what other people have gone through. I don't feel so alone in the world because I know when I was first struggling with all this, then the internet really wasn't a big thing and there wasn't that much stuff way, way back when I was younger and I wasn't sure about things. There was no way to find out. As far as I was concerned, I was the only person and nobody else would have ever felt this way in the history of ever. And it just made me feel so alone and so wrong. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this to hopefully maybe help other people. So gender dysphoria is essentially basically what they would say is what's wrong with your head, I guess. If that's really putting it bluntly and crassly. I'm sure there's a nicer way to say that, but I always am bad with, they, they're, like I said yesterday, they're good in my head, but then once they leave my mouth, it's not the same. But the, the dictionary uh, definition of gender dysphoria is the condition of feeling one's emotional and psychological identity as male or female to be the opposite of one's biological sex, which that kind of, you know, says that in your head, your head says one thing, your body is obviously saying something different. So, and then when it comes up to, uh, just the way it feels. I'm trying to, it's so hard to put into words on how it feels. I'm gonna try to put it into my own words and then I'm gonna read a few things offline. I actually have my computer so I can just read a few things that I have written about it and stuff like that. Basically, it to me, it feels like, and again, these are like, I, with my horrible wording, we'll, we'll see how well these sound. I probably will read better ones off the internet. But to me, it kind of feels like my body and my mind is constantly fighting against itself. Like my mind is wanting or feeling one thing, and of course my body's like, uh, no, no, it's another thing. And it, it gets really, really frustrating, and it feels sometimes like, you know, where, and I mean, I've questioned this a few times, it's like, you question, where do you fit in? Like, there's times where it's like, I really don't feel like I fit in with the girls completely because I don't go through some of the stuff that, you know, cisgendered girls go through, which cisgendered is the term for the people whose minds agree with their biological sex. And then, you know, I obviously don't get along well with the guys whatsoever. And so there's days where I'm sitting there and it's like, where, where do I fit? Where do I belong? And then that just eats away at your mind. And then it's like, Last night, I remember I was watching Pitch Perfect 2, which is a great movie, by the way. <laughs> and I don't know why, I was just sitting there watching and all of a sudden it just started hitting me. I don't even know how to word it, like the friendships that were there, you know, and how it's like, oh, and it's like, I, I feel like I wouldn't ever get that because there's always that one big part of me that's different. Like, yeah, I have my friends that treat me as if, you know, I am Jocelyn, which I mean, I am and all that other stuff and they don't act weird about it. But at the same time, I feel like I don't have that connection if that makes sense I don't know and then on top of it it's just like thinking that it's all like I don't even know how to put it into words exactly I'm I, it's so bad I'm so horrible at explaining it like I know how I feel but I don't know how to explain it so I'm just gonna try and read some things that of people who are much more better with words to explain it than I can because what I said more or less has to do with the social because there, there, there's like multiple layers like there's a social Gender dysphoria, where it's like what I just described, where you just don't feel like you fit in. There's like, I think there's a, uh, then there's just your body gender dysphoria, where you know it's like your body. And I cannot describe the body one right. It's so hard for me to put in the words how it feels. So I'm gonna find, read something off of the internet. So here's one description I have read, which explains a lot of how I feel. And I'm probably going to read a few because some of these are short. They're written by other trans people on different forms and stuff like that. I, mean, I found one earlier and I cannot find it. I'm trying to look for it. And yeah, but if I find it, I'm going to read it. If not, well then I'll just have these little tiny experts. But this one right here is from a form. And this is how uh, they described it, which I think is really good. They said, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what it is to be without it. So I don't know how it would feel to be quote unquote normal, non-gender dysphoric person. I guess if I could sum it up, it would feel like being born in a small prison cell and not knowing if there's a way out and feeling stuck there for life. You feel trapped in every, and even everyday ordinary things. 
you do inside the cell feel like you're dragging chains around while doing them. And people see you, but the walls around you are invisible, so they can't see you're trapped, and so you just seem really weird to them. Basically, the main thought present in your head at all times is that you just went out to see your life passing by and the grains of time slipping right through your fingers. People are living. You want... You watch them living, and you want to run after them and catch up and live too. You just want to smash every clock you see and say, wait, stop, let me out. I want to live too. Please don't run out of time before I get to live too. And that is definitely one way I feel like you totally just feel trapped. Like, and it's hard to explain this trapped feeling. And like, I didn't even think of the fact that maybe it's hard for me to explain what it feels like because this is, has always been how I have felt. So I don't know what the opposite feels like. But I think feeling trapped is definitely one. I remember constantly thinking before I started, you know, transitioning, like, when am I going to hit that point in life that everybody seems to where you feel like life is actually beginning? I mean, in some cases, I still feel like I have not hit that point. Like, I'm still, I feel like life just has not really started for me yet. And it's weird because for most people, especially my age, are like, oh, yeah, it has. But for me, some, some days it feels like it hasn't. Like, I'm still waiting for that moment to be like, okay, go. And so it's like, I feel like I may have missed the starting gun. And I, I don't know. And it just, that that's one really, really good explanation that I have found online that really helps explain at least the trap feeling, I think. I know another way that I have thought that just came to my head that is one of my personal things that I have thought to explain it is... You con I constantly feel like I'm just living a script, like I'm just playing a part, like I'm not being me, like I am just like on forced on this course that I am like on, which I think that has gone away a lot since I started transitioning. I think that that had to come with having to pretend to be and, you know, act like male. I don't know. But basically, I feel like I'm just was like stuck on a course and like I was stuck just living apart. Every single day just felt like the same exact thing. And it wasn't, I felt like I was just being an actor. I wasn't being me. I wasn't actually living life. I was just playing a part. That was the way I've always put it, even before I finally came out to myself because I know I still never actually have done a video about my story of how I got to this point, but a real quick short rundown is basically it was one of those things which I know a lot of people who have been in my situation and even people who have dealt with their, you know, dealing with their sexuality have probably been there has been the whole dealing with at a young age have figured it out. But then like for me, coming from a church background, be told time and time and time again that it is wrong, you're wrong, everything is wrong about that, so you need to not do that. So you bury it down to the point that you forget that it happens. And then as you get older, it slowly works its way out. Sometimes it'll come out and you're like, no, 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 and you shove it down. And basically that was my life up until a few years ago where I finally decided I, I can't live like this anymore. Like it was driving me insane. I think up until that point, and even then, I think up until I actually started transitioning, I felt like I was just living a role and playing a part that wasn't meant for me. I felt like I wasn't, like I said, living life. Like I was just going through the motions every single day and it just didn't feel like life. Like everybody else seemed like, for the most part, I mean, yeah, everybody's life is bad at some point in time, but for the most part, everybody seemed like, hey, life is good, life is fun. And then there's me who's like, when am I ever going to hit that point? When am I ever going to genuinely enjoy life? Like. I mean, I have my loves and my passions, but to a point, I never truly, really ever enjoyed life. Like, I was just there doing things, and I didn't care because, as far as I was concerned, if I did something, it wasn't going to affect me in the long run because tomorrow is just another day of the same old thing because that's pretty much how my life has felt. And, I mean, I'm glad that I feel like, for the most part, I've gotten over that hump. All right, and then this right here is gonna be my last example. This is like more of a medical explanation of how it is, and this is just a really good explanation for how it feels for the most part, and then I'm gonna move on from this point. It's a feeling that your body does not reflect your true gender can cause severe distress, anxiety, and depression. Dysphoria is a feeling of dissatisfaction, anxiety, and restlessness with gender dysphoria. Discomfort with your male or female body can be so intense that it can interfere with the way you function in normal life, for instance at school or work or during social activities. Gender dysphoria can also be called gender identity disorder, but the mismatch between body and internal sense of gender is not a mental illness. Instead, what needs to be addressed are the stress, anxiety, and depression that go along with it. So that right there is a general idea. I hope it gets the idea across what it feels like to have gender 
dysphoria to a point. It just really sucks because then there's days where like I will just sit there and like in the morning when I wake up and I go to get dressed and you know if I see myself here I just want to sit there and cry because it's just I, I don't know why it just really sucks and it hurts and it makes me just feel sad because it's like why why do I need to be this person why could I not have just been a normal human being and I mean I know that this is my burden and maybe this is my way of being able to do something to help the world like I would not be able to you know maybe there's 10 years down the road me doing something and talking about these things will end up helping a lot of people and maybe that was why I don't know but it's some days it's really 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 hard to accept I mean I will admit that but then other days it's something like I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the world because it's made me who I am and it's you know just has it, it's me and I, it's something that I struggle with still on the daily and I think I will struggle with it for a long time I don't know if it'll ever actually go away pretty god it does but if it doesn't I've gotten a lot better though with dealing with it and accepting myself as me. I have two more things and then that'll be the end of this. This is a long one. I'm sure a lot of you have probably tuned out, but if you're still here, thank you for staying with me. Go ahead and give me a like or comment down below if you've made it this far because I'm not sure how far people watch into these ones. I really hope that at least the people who are dealing with this stick with it because there's a few other things and then, yeah. So anyway, the next thing, this is something I wrote the one night when I was really, really, really struggling with my dysphoria and I just like was broke down in tears and I don't know why this just poured out and like I wrote this up and basically it deals with a lot of the stuff that bothers me the most about it and stuff that is said to me and it's gonna get a little personal or awkward so bear with me on this so I'm gonna go just go ahead and read it now. I called it why I'd kill to be cis. People have told me many times oh you're so lucky to never have to deal with periods and such or even worse I've been looked down on and told that I'm not a quote-unquote real woman because I will never experience the physical pain and discomfort a woman goes through when it comes to such things as period, childbirth, etc. But what they fail to realize is I'm not quote-unquote lucky. I'm nowhere near it. I may not feel the physical pain and discomfort that most cis women go through but I would kill to have to deal with that. I would sign right the fuck up for it even if I knew that I'd be one of those girls who were unfortunate enough to deal with the most horrible, nasty, extreme, painful periods every single month. I would take that in a heartbeat. Because all that may suck, but it sucks near, where, near as bad in comparison to not being who you are. The total anguish that comes with being able to truly identify with the trial of being woman. Waking up every day hating myself more and more because of the gender I was assigned at birth. Having to go out and feel like everyone is judging you. That you feel like you are a sick and twisted freak living in a world where not many people accept you and even less people understand you. Having to be faced with the fact that I won't ever feel real. Knowing and being reminded by the world that I will never be able to bear children. A dream I have had since as long as I can remember. I always feel that ache in my heart and I've never experienced the things almost every woman does. The fact that unless I pay thousands of dollars to have my gender reassigned, I'll never experience sex the way my body is wired to want and need and crave. So you may think I'm lucky and you may feel, think I feel no pain like you do, but I would trade my world for that if it meant I would never feel the way I do now. Lost, trapped, and without a real place to belong in the world. Like that is how I feel a good chunk of the time. I mean, I'm good at hiding it. I've hit it for 20 some years, but that was, you know, something that I wrote the one night when I was really, really, really struggling down. Yeah, struggling down, struggling with everything. And I think that it, it sucks because some days it's not that bad, but then other days it's like that and some days it's worse. So anyway, that is how my life is struggling with dysphoria. Um, the one thing that I have not talked about, I don't think at all on here, and I'm actually probably going to use this video as like my little tiny advertisement thingy on my GoFundMe pages. I do have a GoFundMe for my transition fund. Um, I really don't expect many people donate to it, but if they do, that would be great. Literally anything helps, like even, because I mean, it's a big amount, because the surgery costs a lot, which sucks. But it's something that I am pushing for. And I mean, even if in the end nobody donates to and I have to pay a lot of pocket, I don't care. But I mean, if I can get help from people, that would be amazing because I mean, it would be cool. So this is what I wrote for my little thing that I shared on a group about this and I will do it because read it. I if I type things out, I can say my wording better. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead. It's like, I go, hey guys, I'm just gonna jump right in with this one. So here we go. Typically, I'm not one to ask for financial help at all. I like working for what I get, but sometimes it's okay to ask for help. And I feel like this is one of those times. My need is great and any help would be appreciated. 
my whole life I've never felt remotely okay in my own skin, and I've been pushing to become me, but coming from a really crappy area and from a large and low-income family, it's going to be hard for me to reach my goal. And I have waited 23 years to feel okay, and I figured now is the time to ask for help. Anyway, you can find my story on the page, and if you can contribute, even a share would help. And thank you for your time. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the card section, and I'm going to annotate it so it's there. And then it's also, the link for it is also in the description bar. Every video that I have, I have it down in the description bar. So even if you aren't able to donate, but you could share, that would mean wonders to me. Because, I mean, it's become a little disheartening. I think I've had my GoFundMe set up since December of last year and I still haven't raised anything so it gets sometimes really really sad because I normally will go and look at that whenever I'm feeling really really down and really really dysphoric and I look at it and then that really doesn't help because it's like oh I'm nowhere near my goal I didn't even start towards it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this look into my life I hope that those of you who have never experienced this maybe have a better grasp on what it feels like have a better grasp on like what it's like to deal with that stuff for those of you that do deal with it, I hope that this helps you at least feel like you're not alone. To know that there's people out there that do deal with this and I really hope that maybe it has helped you somehow. If people, if you have been somebody who deals with it or even if you're somebody who has never dealt with it at all but you still want to learn more because you just want to understand trans people better, don't be afraid to message me on any of my social media things. You can message me on my Facebook page. You can tweet me, you can message me on Tumblr, um, you can message me on YouTube, which they have that hidden so I really don't expect messages there, <laughs> but however you guys want to, if you, or just comment down the below and then we'll figure out a way to talk a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I guess that is all for now. I really hope you guys did enjoy this and I really hope that you have left with a little bit better understanding of others and yourselves. Um, if you did enjoy it, give me a thumbs up, let me know in the comment section, and um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, um, go ahead and subscribe. I don't do a lot of trans vlogs because it's hard for me to talk, figure out what to talk about and I'm not sure what to talk about and how to talk about it as you can tell, but I do do a few. I have a, uh, a playlist of all of my videos. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the card section as well of all the t trans issues that I've talked about so far, but I also talk about some fun stuff, so go ahead and subscribe to see all the fun things. And um, like I said, I have all my social media in the description bar below for all of my things so you can get a hold of me or just stay up to date on everything I post and do. And I guess that is all for now. I'd like to, I really, really, really would like to thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Bye!